Coming up on this episode of Student DV, we go to sports rallies, do the Euro step, and swim the butterfly stroke. Stay tuned for all this and more on Student DV. exciting episode of Student TV. My name is Aaliyah Evans and I'll be your host today on this episode all about fitness. First I thought we'd kick things off with a little soccer. Here's Ashley Richards to show us some of her sweet moves. Ashley. Next we have a news story about the Sportsorama at Arden Middle School. Here are the student producers Zoe and Rachel to tell us more. So in my video we talk about the importance of coming to after school activities. Basically we're telling about um, an event that happened at Arden called Sportsorama and it was just a way to tell the students about what happened. On February 2nd, 2017, Arden held the annual sports Rama. This is an event held at night where students compete against each other to take the winning title. During sports Rama, we do many fun activities, such as dodgeball, wacky relay races, tug of war, captain flag, and much, much more. This year, Mrs. Ezekiel's team won. This is my second year of three years. So I won the first year and brought my title back this year. We decided to dig a little deeper and ask the chair of the event her favorite part and what it takes to set it all up. We've been planning Sportsorama since um, last December and planning Sportsorama we have to plan all the games, come up with all the games and collect all the supplies and everything and it's a really long process but it's really great once we see it all finished and put together. Students at Arden also enjoy the event. It gives them a chance to compete against each other in a friendly environment and have an awesome time. My favorite part of Sportsorama is hanging out with my friends and cheering on the teams. Sportsorama is fun for everybody. The future of Sportsorama will draw attention to even more people and spark ideas for extra activities at Arden. This is Arden Student News signing out. Thanks, Zoe and Rachel. Sportsorama looks like a lot of fun. Now that we're all rallied up, Hofik is going to teach us how to do the Euro step. Check this out. So you want to learn how to Euro step, huh? Well, you've come to the correct place. They call me the Euro step God. Guess who taught James Harden? I did. So before we start, there's gonna be some things you need: a ball, some arm sleeves, some LeBrons, and some leg sleeves. Now, some people think that to do a Euro step, you need to be in the paint, 
that's not true. You can do a your step into a three. I'll demonstrate. But before we start, let's learn the basics, how to do a euro step. So to do a euro step, you're tilting towards the defender, hands up to And let's say you want to do a left handed layup. You're going to pick up the ball, and you're going to step to the right with the ball to your right. Then you're going to jump off your left to the left side and take the ball to your left hand, then jump off your left foot and do a layup. That, those are the basics. Now let's see it in action. And that's how you do a Euro step from a three. I hope you learned everything and now go take some angles. He shoots, he scores. Way to go, Hovick. Next, we'll head back to find out what the students at Arden Middle School are doing in their PE classes to get physically active. When you walk into Arden Middle School, what's your favorite thing? Some say the spirited rallies, others say the artistic nature, but a lot of students say the dance unit that we have each year. Here at Arden, we have a dance unit that the teachers and most students enjoy. Kids really enjoy it. That proves to be our most popular activity throughout the school year. I think that the dance unit's fun because you get to have fun with your friends. The dance unit teaches the students many things, from swing dancing to a proper handshake. Because it teaches you etiquette and manners. Um, the dance unit is a standard for both, or for, for the 6th, 7th, and 8th grades. The dance unit is always the most popular here at Arden. The PE teachers teach us great moves and will continue to use these dances in the future. Okay, so maybe dance isn't the sport for you, but here's a new story about the after-school football program at Del Paso Manor Elementary. Hi, my name is Katie Barnett and I'm here at DPM to talk about Friday football. Let's see what some students have to say about this after-school activity. What do you enjoy about Friday football? Well, it's a really fun way to start out your weekend, a fun way to bond with your friends. I enjoy going outside and playing football after school on Fridays with all my friends. I like that no one's really keeping score and it's just whenever someone gets hurt, everyone stops and makes sure it's their own okay. Friday football is run by fourth grade teacher Mr. Lamar. Let's see what he has to say about Friday football. Some of the benefits of Friday football are, first of all, it's just fun for the game and giving everybody a chance to, uh, to get out and, and learn football and uh, pick up skills that they didn't have before. But I also think that part of the benefits are it, it's the social piece. And everybody goes out there and at the beginning of the year, it's like everybody's playing football, but by the end of the year, it's just a social Thing. So fourth graders, fifth graders, sixth graders all get to hang out together and uh, one of the benefits for me is I get to know uh, the players and the kids and students in ways that I wouldn't normally see them. But I just think it's uh, fun for all the kids that are out there playing just to socialize and hang out and, and play a little football too. Even athletes need to learn manners if they want to play sports which is why Lacey Davis is going to tell us a little more about having good sportsmanship. Whatever sport you play, sportsmanship is important. One more shot, I win! It's okay, you can after a game, don't be late. What a good sport. You know what else is a good sport? Wrestling. Katie and Haley are going to tell us about the Arden Wrestling Program and how they use their sportsmanship. In this video, um, we learn about the um, program and um, what, it, like, what it's like to wrestle and what, um, our, what students' perspectives are on the program. It just like how, it just tells you how the Arden and Panther wrestling team, how like it cooperates with Arden school and how it helps the students. Here at Arden, one of the favorite after school programs is wrestling. Let's learn a little more about the wrestling program. Here at Arden, the wrestling program teaches more than self-defense. It helps people in life. 
We talked to an art and wrestler about how it helps her in life. It boosts my self confidence up because, like, when people, like, since I'm a girl and they, like, say, like, oh, you wrestle, like, I don't, like, mind it. Wrestling at Arden really does help in life. We also talked to Mr. Banks about how wrestling can help the students at school and everywhere else. Well, I think wrestling helps the students by, A, it keeps them physically fit, which is really good, teaches them teamwork skills, teaches them really good social skills uh, to, you know, not only work with their teammates, but to, you know, work with their opponent afterwards and, you know, congratulate them, win or lose, and be respectful. It also helps once you get to high school to connect you to the school. So when you get to high school, you start with wrestling and then you kind of build a small family with that wrestling team and it you know, makes kids want to go to school and keeps kids interested. Talk to Zoe one more time about inspiring girls and boys to wrestle. Girls, they're like, like it's like rowing, so like there are more and more girls. So like you'll wrestle with a lot of girls. And it's like when you're wrestling, when you're wrestling with girls, it's really fun. Arden has a powerhouse wrestling team under the direction of Coach Eric Miller. Come out to support your Arden Panther wrestling team. This is Arden Media signing out. Thanks, Katie and Haley. Someone better buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks because Stephen Hartman is going to take us out to the ball game and teach us how to swing a bat. Many people like to watch the game of baseball, but some don't know how to swing a bat correctly. Let me show you how. This is an example of a bad swing. Let's try to fix that. Before you are ready to get in the box, you have to have an idea of where you want the ball to go. When you step into the box, you need to be close enough to the plate that you can hit the balls that come close to you, but you still need to be able to hit anything that goes away from you. When I step into the box, I like to place my feet a little more than shoulders length apart. You don't want them too far apart nor too close to each other. When the pitch is about to be thrown, you need to load your hands and legs. First, take a step, don't lunge. When you step, make sure you step towards the pitcher and not in towards the plate or open up. Twist your back foot like you are killing a bug under your shoe. While doing this, push your hands through a little bit, but don't swing fully. When the pitch is thrown, start swinging with your hands. When swinging with your hands, try not to twist them while hitting the ball. This is the last step of your swing. Finally, this is a good example of a swing. After you get those basics down, you're ready to hit dingers. Thanks, Steven. You know, all this talk about sports has really worked up quite a sweat. I like to just take a dip in the pool and cool off for a bit. Good thing Elena Bazo is up next to show us how to swim the butterfly stroke. My video was about how to swim my favorite swimming stroke competitively. It is called the butterfly. Well, basically, I do my intro and introduce myself, and then I talk about the five S's. The five S's are the five main things in butterfly that you should know. And then I show you over, I have some B-roll of me swimming and we interview my swim coach who gives us some tips on doing the butterfly. Hi, I'm Elena. Today, I like to talk to you guys about a swimming stroke that most people think is really hard. It's called the butterfly. Today, I'll go over the basics of butterfly with you. I'll teach you how your arms and legs should move so you can go super fast. And then we'll inter interview Summer Treadwell, who coaches for CCA, California Capital Aquatics. Just like in freestyle, the swimmer is facing down towards the bottom, bottom of the pool. Let's break down the butterfly. All good butterfly swimmers know the five S's. Straight and gentle arms, a shallow pull, sweeping out to the side, sneaking in the breath, and a super dolphin kick. When you do the butterfly, you don't want your arms working vigorously. You're exerting too much energy and are probably not going anywhere. Number two, a shallow pull. Water is heavy. If you pull too deep in the water, you're pulling nothing, basically. So what you want is a sweet spot right in the water, where it's kind of in the middle, so you pull your body forward. Number three, sweeping out to the side. After you pull your arms through the water, you need to get them back out in front of you really fast. And number four, 
sneaking the breath in. I've always had trouble with this one. I used to bob on the water for a really long time and I wouldn't go anywhere. You wanna just pop your head up and get right back in. Be really fast. And number five, this is the most important one that all butterfly swimmers have to get really good at. It's the super dolphin kick. A kick is one of the most important parts in the butterfly, other than the pulling. You want your legs glued together and you want a snap so it pushes you through the water really quickly. And if you do it correctly, it should feel like you're cracking a whip. Here we are at the pool, and we're going to interview Summer Treadwell, who coaches for CCA, California Capital Aquatics. How long will it take to perfect a stroke like the butterfly? That's a very good question, Elena. And if I were to answer it honestly, it will take you forever. It will never be perfected. Yeah. Is it harder to teach the butterfly than other strokes? Butterfly is much harder to teach, I would say, than freestyle and backstroke. There are way more components that go into the skill. You have your arm position, you have head position, you have where your feet are, where your kick is going in and out, hips up and down. It's much more technical than just freestyle. How important are dry land exercises? It's very important to build muscle strength in areas, especially for a butterfly swimmer yeah. who we take a lot of torque and strain on our shoulders. Yeah. So, you know, having added muscles and strength there is very important. Um, we focus planks, um, sit-ups, we do jumping jacks. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about swimming the butterfly. Just remember, it's all about repetition and determination. No good butterfly swimmer has gotten that good without lots of repetition. They try and try, and finally, they become really good at it. And remember the five S's. The, those are the most important things about learning the butterfly. Try them out next time you're at the pool. You're fine, you'll, you will find yourself improving quickly. Thanks for watching. See you at the Olympics. All that water just reminded me of something. I need to drink some water. Diane and Cindy will tell us why it's important to stay hydrated while I go find some water. Well, my video is about staying hydrated and how you should drink water when exercising or doing anything fun or going outside. It starts off with a boy, two boys who are running and one of the boys has a water bottle and the friend offers the water bottle to his friend but the other friend doesn't really want it because he thinks that he doesn't really need it. After a couple minutes, um, the boy who didn't accept the water faints and then the friend with the water bottle explains to him why he should drink water and why he should have accepted his water bottle. You need some water? No, nah, real men don't drink water. Dude, are you okay? This is why you should drink water, Quentin, so you don't pass out. Here you go. Stay hydrated. Ah, that's so much better. All these athletic students must have a very busy schedule. I wonder how they keep up with practice and still find time to do their homework. For our last video, Will Sigali will explain his documentary and how sports actually benefit academic success. Our video is a documentary we kind of illustrate with like interviewees just to kind of benefit to sports and like how it seems like a daunting task but how in reality it's, it could be a very beneficial to your academic career. You should learn that like you can really juggle academics and sports. It's a very easy task and there's lots of benefits whether in the classroom, socially, leadership skills that you can gain from playing sports. Mark Twain once said, 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than the ones that you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. There are a bunch of reasons not to be a student athlete. The risk of injury, lack of free time, risk of lower grades, and more stress. But the benefits alone show why being a student athlete is so beneficial. I think it goes hand in hand when you see athletes, uh, student athletes, and how well they do with 
um, their grades, their academics, and how they do in their sports. There's a direct correlation. Um, a lot of student athletes are successful in the classroom because they learn qualities in, this, in their sports that they do that translate over. Here is a student's perspective on the benefit of sports. Well, you know, of course I had doubts and, and I was scared a little bit. Uh, going to high school just in general is kind of a daunting task. But, you know, you get there and you start managing your time just like anything else. Uh, one of my main concerns was that, you know, I have more than one extracurricular activity. So managing my classes, my homework, um, but also worrying about, uh, you know, things that I'm doing other than baseball, uh, managing all that stuff. Uh, well, inside school, you know, uh, there's the social aspect of it. You meet a lot of kids while you're playing sports. You have a certain status around school. People like to talk to you about the sport you're playing. And that's kind of a cool aspect of sports. You know, and also, baseball especially, it's a very mental, uh, very, very strategic game that challenges your intellect. And that's something that can really help you in the classroom is when you're constantly testing your brain and uh, making sure that your cognitive skills are up to par, then you can go back into the classroom and reflect that. That's good practice. Uh, all those kind of methods that, I'm talk that I've talked about that are helping me in the classroom that I get from baseball uh, wouldn't be there if I didn't play it. You know, it, it, it's, it, it would be harder to kind of put some of the things that I'm using in school into real life if I didn't have an extracurricular outlet. Uh, to kind of use it. Overall, it may seem very difficult to juggle school and sports, but as coaches and student athletes will tell you, that the benefits alone prove why sports are worth playing. With a little time management and hard work, these benefits can be easily obtained. So as Mark Twain said, explore, dream, discover. My name is Twee Pham. I work at uh, Creative Connections Arts Academy. I'm a sixth grade teacher. The main important thing is why use video, okay? I came across a site. Um, I don't know if you guys heard about it. It's, it's called YouTube. It's really cool. I mean, it has like really good video. Raise your hand if you guys have watched videos, some sort of video, in the past two days. Raise your hand, please. Okay. So, yeah, and, and I think that's where we're at. I think the, the time and the effort that you need to put into it is the story. You know, a lot of people say, well, I'll get a really expensive cabaret and it looks really nice, but the story is really terrible. You guys have all been to movies where you sat through an hour and a half and you said, what was that? So I think that's what, the, um, that's what we need to focus on. That's what kids really need to put the time and effort into is the story. A lot of people have smartphones nowadays, so they have some sort of video capturing possibilities. So it's not way back then where it's hard to get a video camera. Just recently um, at the Sundance Film Festival, uh, one of the films was nominated uh, um, and won awards and they shot uh, it on an iPhone 5. So you don't need the, uh, the camera. I need a model. Anybody? Come on up. Okay. I need a crew member. Anybody want to be a crew member? Okay, come on up. Okay, come on. Okay. We're just waiting for the video. All right, look at that. You're on the big screen there. See that? Okay. So. It doesn't look bad, but when you add a little bit of extra lighting, you can see it really makes a big difference. Let me see. You see the difference? Just by adding a little bit of lighting. Now, this is a whiteboard, nothing fancy. So what you're gonna do is, okay, you can look straight forward, okay, for me. Now, you can see the difference. You're gonna hold this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna bounce some of that light. It's gonna hit here, science lesson here. It's gonna bounce and then move that right back to his face. Okay, look forward, right out there. Okay, you're gonna hold it up to his face. Right there, okay. You guys see, it's, it's subtle, but sometimes you can see the lighting. So what you're doing is, since the lighting is hitting on one side of the face, what you wanna do is capture that light, bounce it back, and try to hit the other side of the face. So it adds a big difference. Like I said, it's the icing on the cake. So you can have that, right? Yeah. Or, wait, one more, ready? Here's your, ready? This is it. Pow. Look at that. Thank you, you guys. So, 
Nice job. Most of the kids decide to film inside the cafeteria, you know, where it's loud, or outside the playground. Now, you can probably hear the, your subject, but then when you go back, you know, the mics are really sensitive. It will probably record more than you, what you wanted. A key terminology that I tell all my students, because um, they know us around school, is to yell out, quiet on set, so that way they know that you are filming. So if somebody's having a side conversation, guys, I'm filming real quick, can you just hold your conversation for five seconds? You know why I just do this one piece? And they're really respectful as long as you just explain what you're doing. Because if you can't hear, if you can't hear what's going on, basically it, you, you don't understand what's going on. So it's basically disqualified. So really focus on your audio. Awesome, okay, thank you guys. Oh, and most important, have fun, okay? I mean, it's, that's where it comes from. That's, it, it, you get, really gotta have fun with it. All right, thanks guys. Well, that's all we have time for today. If you'd like to see more student videos, you can always check out our website at secctv.org. And make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I'm Aaliyah Evans. Thanks for watching.